Welcome to another episode of Port. If you want to know all about what the Sport series is, check out the card appearing somewhere up here for an introduction to this series. But in a nutshell, it's about me switching to private, open and responsible technology. And of course, that includes Linux. In the previous episode, I compared some different laptops to establish which would be the best one for me to choose as a relatively high demand power user. Uh, obviously, the laptop needed to run Linux, but also needed to have the specs to allow me to do what I need to do, which is basically development, running virtual machines, gaming and video editing. And considering a few very good contenders, I settled on the System76 Oryx Pro which has arrived and I can't wait to unbox it, but I've been holding myself back to leave the unboxing to this video. So, without any further ado, let's go ahead and unbox the thing, because I can't wait to finally see it. Now, of course, like many laptops, the Oryx Pro is configurable when you buy it. Um, in my case, I got the Intel Core i7-11800H. I configured it with 32GB of RAM and an RTX 3070. Uh, I also have a 500GB NVMe drive. More drive options, CPU options and even an RTX 3080 are available and the maximum RAM is 64 gigs. The configuration as I bought it is $2,419. Um, although when it arrived here in Malta, I needed to pay around 400 euro in VAT. That's value added tax that we have here. Luckily, import duties in Malta for electronics are zero. However, that may vary depending on your country. I really wish that System76 had a European store or perhaps even a global store so we could avoid these duties and taxes, but it is what it is. Let's unbox. Okay, and here it is, the box that the laptop has arrived in. And you can see that up here on the flap it says Unleash your potential, to unleash potential, open box, lift platform and flatten. Do not employ sharp objects, seriously. Now, uh, I'm a bit perplexed about that one, because how am I supposed to cut the tape? So I'm using this spreading knife. Um, I don't think it qualifies as much of a sharp object and it should be able to cut the tape on the box without causing any damage. So let's go ahead and do this. <sighs> okay, so that seemed like it's done it. And here we go. And this is the box that the laptop comes in. Uh, it's got some pretty cool designs here. It's a pretty cool box, actually. And it says, wait, don't cut it. The packaging is reusable. Unfold and slide out. Okay, fair enough. Uh, we've also seen to have the power charger, power adapter here. Oh, and this just comes out like this. And uh, yes, just as I feared, they sent it with a US plug, despite me telling them that I'm shipping this to Malta. Um, <laughs> so I'm gonna have to replace that part of it, but never mind. And in here we also get an SSD screw and a cleaning cloth and whatever the hell this is, which is a blue square of something. I have no idea what this is meant to be. Uh, I think maybe it's to attach to an M.2 SSD if you upgrade it for cooling or something, but I'm not entirely sure. Anyway, so that's all gravy. Now let's move on to the main event. Uh, and as you can see at the bottom of the box, we have what will you make? Okay, and there's some pretty cool uh, designs all around the box here, uh, which is pretty nice. Right, so let's get this box out of the way for now. Whew. So wait, don't cut it, unfold and slide out. So uh, unfold, 
Okay. And slide out. Ooh. There we go. That's the laptop. And in here is an envelope. So let's look at the contents of this envelope here. Oh, so <laughs> some stickers and other goodies. So this is uh, one of those stickers with the Pop! OS theme on it. Uh, this is the lander. And here we have the Pop! OS logo and the System76 powered by and in another format right here. And then we have a desktop sentinel, which is apparently a cardboard cutout. So I'll place Melvin right here to guard my stuff. Oh, there's some more stickers here. Uh, the rocket ship motif and another System76 sticker. And here we have the, uh, thank you for purchasing a System76 computer. If you're not already a Linux user, let us be the first to welcome you, blah, blah, blah. We take pride in our systems, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, you can pause the video to see what's written here. And on the side, there's just this stylish 76 logo. Okay, so that's all cool. That's all good stuff. Now let's go to the main event, which is the laptop itself. And uh, obviously there is a peel to do here. So that's, uh, oh, it's one of those double-sided ones. Okay, so we'll have to open it first. Here we are, we have this little protective thing here. And this plastic sleeve. Okay, it's not a peel, it's just a sleeve that pops right off. And there it is, the System76 Oryx Pro. Now let's take a good look at the thing. So starting with the first impressions, uh, it's uh, hefty, but not too heavy. Uh, you can see the ports here. We have two USB 3 ports and a um, Ethernet jack here. And uh, on the other side, we have another USB port, the uh, microphone jack and the headphone or headset jack. And looking here at the back, we have the power barrel plug, the Thunderbolt 4 port, HDMI output, and mini HDMI output. Okay, so that's all good. And here we have the uh, System76 logo itself. Now, flipping it around, let's go ahead and take a closer look at the thing. So one of the first things that I want to check with this laptop is, can I open it with just one hand? Uh, so let's see whether that's possible. So with just one hand, oh yes. <laughs> well, it's not one of those laptops where the bottom is going to be lifted up due to the wonky weight distribution. Uh, the laptop opens up with just one hand, just fine. Uh, looking at the screen, it's not too reflective, which is a good thing. And it really does fit in nicely with these bezels here. Now let's look at the build quality. So uh, there is, Quite a lot of deck flex, as you can see here in the middle, although to be fair, this is the weak point of the device. But other than that, around the trackpad, for example, it feels fairly good. And, oh, hello. There's some sort of protective thing here. Uh, and here, oh yes, this feels absolutely solid. As for the flexibility of the screen, yeah, it's not particularly flexible, which is a good thing. So it is pretty rigid. It is also um, all metal construction. I believe this is aluminium or aluminum, <laughs> say it what, however you wish. And uh, if we look at the keyboard feel itself, let's see what this feels like. I'm in a weird position, of course, to be able to do this. Oh yes, I could get used to that. Uh, the buttons actually have quite a lot of travel. Uh, they are less rigid than obviously a desktop keyboard would be, but then again, what do you expect? It is a laptop. And uh, yeah, that looks very, very good. 
Uh, now let's go ahead and power on the laptop for the first time. And here we are, straight into PopOS um, and with the prompt to install it on our system. Okay, so I've been using the Oryx Pro for a couple of days now. Wanted to use it a little bit before I could give you my proper impressions. So again, I still really like the fact that you can open this guy with just one hand. Uh, I know it sounds like a silly thing, but to me, that's something that is really important. Now, one thing you should look at here is the deck flex. Uh, as you can see, whilst I'm pressing the K and J area of the keyboard, it's actually not that great. As you can see, there's quite a bit of flex. Now, other areas of the keyboard are fine, as you can see here. Um, uh, but yeah, that J area is really quite flexible. Now, to be honest, you do get used to it, and I've been able to type at my full regular typing speed. And also the addition of the trackpad is really a nice touch, especially when I'm working with documents. Now, besides the deck, I mean the rest of the laptop is very, very solid. There's no movement at all here, and this material feels really nice as well. Uh, we can also look at the monitor flex here. Now, to be honest, I'm doing this because everybody else does this, but in reality, how often are you gonna be flexing the monitor in this way? It doesn't flex in this way when you are opening it, so there's really nothing to worry about. The touchpad feels really great. It is very glidey. It is, of course, a bit of a fingerprint magnet. Uh, you can especially see this if I turn on the light here. But then again, you will not be surprised to know that most touchpads actually look like this when you shine a direct light on them. Those things are nasty. And the buttons here uh, both feel and sound really good. As for the keyboard light, uh, let's go ahead and turn off the lights here so you can see what it looks like at night. And as you can see, that is what it looks like. Now that's not at full brightness here. So, okay, so this is with the keyboard brightness at its full level. And the keyboard color can be changed as well using a key combination uh, on the um, laptop itself. Whilst we're in this comparison mode, you can see here the difference between the maximum brightness of the Oryx Pro and my 2018 MacBook Pro. Uh, you should know that this is the one with that butterfly keyboard. You can see that on the MacBook, uh, there isn't that much bleed and the characters really do stand out besides there being the touch bar. Uh, on the Oryx Pro, it's also very, very easy to read. Now, depending on your angle, there is a bit more light bleed. Uh, but then again, these keys are more raised and this offers a much better typing experience, at least in my opinion. Let's also compare full brightness of the displays from the Oryx Pro and again, my MacBook Pro 2018. Ironically, we're seeing a Windows 11 video here, but it's a pretty video nonetheless. You can see that both laptops have a very nice display. Um, I'm very used to the MacBook displays, but honestly, the Oryx Pro display is just as impressive, um, besides the fact that obviously it's a bit bigger here. Let's also compare the audio quality. So we'll start first with the Oryx Pro. So And let's compare that to the MacBook. So. Yeah, so you can see there, it's no contest. The MacBook Pro wins hands down. Now, this is well known. It's not just that most laptop audio sucks, but it's also that MacBook Pro audio is fantastic. 
Uh, honestly, I was expecting this. And despite the Oryx Pro having fantastic gaming capabilities, you'll probably be gaming with headphones. Now, another reason you'll be gaming with headphones is the fan noise. It is not annoying at all. It's not a whine or something like that. However, it is loud. Let's take a listen. So as you can see here in game, the fan does actually slow up after a while. Uh, the fan seems to come on mostly when the CPU is doing something um, or when uh, assets are being loaded in. As you can see here, I'm inside Doom Eternal and it's not like the fan is too bad. Um, as you can see here, now of course I'm not playing properly, I'm holding a camera and trying to game with one hand. But you can see that actually the fan noise isn't that bad at all. And this is what the built-in webcam looks like here recording myself during a meeting. Nothing to write home about, but it works. The default software distributed with uh, the System76 Oryx Pro is Pop! OS which is System76's own customized version of Ubuntu. Um, you can see that they have this rather controversial dock here at the bottom, which extends to the edges of the display. This is, by the way, based on uh, Ubuntu 21.04. 21.10 should be coming soon, but it hasn't been officially released, so I'm sticking with what came with the laptop. You'll also notice here I've installed quite a lot of applications myself and quite a few are left as well. Uh, looking at the UI, uh, we basically here have this key here, which brings up the global search. There's also the super key on the keyboard, which when pressed brings up the same search and I can search for programs here, as you can see. Uh, this is the workspace view. Now this shows you your workspaces. Uh, so for example, I can get the Firefox window and add it to uh, this desktop here, okay? And so as you can see, what happens is that um, if I swipe on my tr trackpad, I can go between my different workspaces, okay? So for example, uh, I'll put Steam here, and as you can see, when I swipe down with four fingers, I go to Firefox, here I go back to an empty desktop, and here I go back to Steam, as you can see, okay? So that's how the desktops work. You can also swipe with four fingers to the right, and that will bring up the list of your applications uh, and swiping with four fingers to the left uh, will bring up the workspaces view and as you can see here I can quickly choose between my desktops uh, as well as choosing which application I currently want to see. Now there is some included software with the, um, with this, with the laptop um, from this that you see here you obviously have the GNOME utilities, calculator, calendar, contacts, files the Firefox web browser, the PopShop. Now PopShop is the software installation tool here, customized again by System76. You can see some popular software here, like Spotify and uh, the Atom Editor, Lutris, Slack, Steam, and so on. And they're also categorized here. Uh, so you can click on, for example, internet, and you can see a list of software is displayed. And from this uh, software manager, you can pretty much typically install either the Flatpak version or the version from the System76 repositories. Um, in this case, as you can see from the Ubuntu repository. Moving back to the software, which is pre-installed, there's also LibreOffice, uh, Giri as the email client, and a few system utilities, including the uh, System76 driver, which you, it's great for debugging, um, uh, obviously a terminal, a few utilities, as you can see here, including an image viewer and so on, screenshot taker. So it's pretty much a stock version of GNOME, 
uh, with a few System76 stuff thrown in and a very minimal selection of software, which I really enjoy. After all, anything you could need, you can quickly install from the pop shop. Uh, now, let's take a look at gaming on this laptop. After all, this is not a Pop! OS review. Uh, so I've got Steam here, as you can see, uh, and I'm going to launch Tech Guru Staple Doom Eternal. Now, I do get a warning uh, that I need a newer version of the NVIDIA graphics drivers. Um, however, I, I, I see that the game works just fine with the version that I have. Remember that this is running in Proton, okay? This is a Windows game running on Linux through the Proton compatibility layer in Steam. Okay, so let's take a little bit of a look at the settings here. You can see that it's running at 1080p. Uh, now I'm gonna try not to go over 7,400 or 7.4 gigs of RAM, uh, since there seems to be a limitation with the total amount I can allocate. Uh, so actually I think by turning off uh, ray tracing, which is here, yeah, we should be just fine. Other than that, as you can see, most of the settings are set to Ultra Nightmare. So we will apply these changes and then go to my typical Exaltia level which as you can see loads pretty speedily and here we are let's switch to the super shotgun here we go okay all right now of course i am playing with a trackpad here again this is just to show you and one thing i should do probably is to Enable the FPS counter. Which, as you can see, is now here. Uh, so you can see that I am running at 144 FPS pretty much, which is fantastic because this is a 144 Hertz display. Uh, so at this setting, we are making full use of this guy. Um, of course, there are some dips in the frame rate. As you can see here, we're almost at 100. But again, when the action gets going, uh, you'll see that actually in person, this looks really, really good. And uh, again, I'm not going to have fantastic performance here playing with the trackpad. But you can kind of see that it looks really good. And the frame rate again is fantastic here. Uh, let's see if I can do this. Okay, and we'll smash through here, there we go, nicely done, and this looks really, really nice, again, you can see the statistics there in the top right-hand corner, <laughs> definitely beats cloud gaming, <laughs> but then again, it would, wouldn't it? Uh, okay, this guy's now annoying me, and so let's see if we can do this okay so now we should be getting to the final boss guy well final boss really the area boss okay now one thing I want to try is to see whether I can take this even further uh, by enabling ray tracing. Now, as you can see, that would get my VRAM to 7603, which uh, gives me problems, it's too much. So overall, I'm gonna set this to Nightmare, and we'll set the texture pool size to Ultra. Yeah, that should work. Okay, so now we have RTX enabled. And as you can see, uh, as beautiful as this looks, uh, the frame rate has gone down considerably uh, with RTX enabled. As you can see, we're something like 22 
23 FPS here. Uh, now, actually, I'm seeing that as a bit of a too much of a performance dip. So let's actually try uh, restarting the level. So we'll exit to the main menu. Okay, so we're back in the menu here, and you can see here, top right, that ray tracing is on. Okay, uh, and we're at 1080p, and I'll just confirm here in my video settings that yes, uh, everything is set to nightmare. So let's see what ray tracing performance we get now that we've started the game fresh um, with ray tracing enabled. All right, so this is very respectable. Um, ray tracing is enabled. Honestly, I'm not the hugest fan of ray tracing. I mean, I have yet to see something that really wows me uh, with ray tracing. However, you should notice if you have a keen eye that those explosions and these lighting effects here. I mean, okay, here you can kind of see it, guys. You can see the reflection of the sigil or whatever it is on the gun. And uh, again here, you can see it, the reflection on the gun is very nice. Uh, the windows also look much nicer, these stained glass windows here, and these rays look pretty nice too. Well, okay, so I guess I can see the difference in ray tracing. <laughs> okay, okay. But as you can see, I mean, very, very respectable FPS. We're almost hovering around 100 with ray tracing enabled at 1080p at nightmare quality settings and I'm not going to go through the entire battle again but I hope you can kind of see the difference uh, as much as YouTube will allow it between normal and ray traced gaming on this laptop it is very very playable at least on Doom Eternal which I've been told will run just fine even on a potato but you, you get the idea guys it does work beautifully So there you have it, an unboxing and initial impressions of the Oryx Pro. Uh, I'll be sure to post some updates. Uh, as, as, as I said, I'm going to be using this thing a lot, so I'll be able to give you more details about how the unit performs over time. Now, I'm not getting rid of my MacBook Pro anytime soon. I still need it for work anyway. And after all, this is an experiment. Um, will I be able to switch to Linux? And will the Linux operating system and ecosystems of apps it offers be able to fill my requirements? But I am switching to the Oryx Pro as my daily driver and hope to free myself from the clutches of Apple and Google as soon as possible. Be sure to subscribe to Tech Guru and hit that bell notification icon to be notified when the next episode in this series is released. I'm also now on Odyssey, which is an open source and open platform uh, for publishing videos that is not under the control of Google or in fact any one company. I'm planning a lot of stuff on how to switch your life to private, open, and responsible technology, so you may want to follow this series. Your subscription certainly means a lot to me, as it motivates me to keep going. And if you really want to help this channel, please consider subscribing to me on Patreon, where you can also help me financially. All this new tech isn't cheap, so I'd certainly appreciate it. I'll catch you in the next one, and as always, thanks for watching.